Hello team two and welcome to Monday the 6th of July's learning. Let's get busy. So we're going to do some rhyming to begin with. I think rhyming is important. It's something that can trip us up still. So can you help Oristar to find all of the rhyming words? Pick the correct rhyming word. So what's our word here? Can you read it out loud? Shout it out. It's bite. Okay. And then our words are shout them out with me lie sight soon which word is a rhyming word it's sight okay we have the word what's the word there sound it out if you need to it's pointing to his snout so our rhyming words are shout them out with me shout camp May, which words rhyme with snout? Snout and shout. Woohoo! Okay, what's our words? Really quick, one, two, three, hot. And then our words are smart, lot, and tall. Which word rhymes with hot? Of course, it's lot. Hot and lot. Woohoo! Today we're going to be reading this story and I want you to read the questions at the bottom and then think about what your answers are going to be. Pause me now. So what is the title of this story? Have you read it before? If you have, what do you like about it? And if you haven't, what do you think might happen? I want you to write down some ideas if you're by yourself at home and you want to email them to me. Talk to a grown up or a brother or a sister or talk to somebody in school. So I would like you to read your questions, read your extract, think of your sentence stem openers and then answer the questions, please, guys. Pause me now. What was Jack's and Jack's mom most valuable possession? Why did they like her so much? And what did Jack have to take Daisy to the market? To sell? Why did Jack have to take Daisy to the market to sell her? Once upon a time, there lived a boy called Jack. He lived in a cottage with his mother and their most valuable possession was a cow called Daisy. Daisy provided fresh milk for Jack and his mother every day. They loved her very much. Sadly, the day came when Jack and his mother had no money left. Jack's mother told him that he would have to take Daisy to the market to sell her. Jack was distraught, but he knew that he had no choice. He set off to market with Daisy, feeling very sorrowful. So what was Jack's and Jack's mom's most valuable possession? Jack and Jack's mom's most valuable possession was Daisy the cow. Why did they like her so much? They liked Daisy the cow so much because she provided fresh milk for Jack and his mother every day. Why did Jack have to take Daisy to the market to sell her? Jack had to take Daisy to the market to sell her because they had no money left. Read the questions, read the extract, sentence stems, answer with your sentence stems. Pause me now. Which adjectives describe the man that Jack met? Sorry guys, I got distracted then. So read it, questions, read it, and then answer. Which, adje which adjectives describe the man that Jack met? Have Jack and this man met before and how do you know? On the way to market, Jack met a man. The man was a large curly, the man had a large curly moustache and was wearing a sparkly yellow cloak. He stared with interest at Daisy and then at Jack. What a fine cow you have there, Jack. How do you know my name, asked Jack, confused. I know a lot of things, chuckled the mysterious man. For example, I know that these beans that I hold in my hand have magical powers. So what adjectives describe the man that Jack met? So he, let's have a look, let's get the highlighter out. <clears throat> he had a large curly moustache, so large and curly describe his moustache, and was wearing a sparkly yellow cloak. So sparkly and yellow describe his cloak. <clears throat> have Jack and this man met before? How do you know? So you'd think that maybe they had met before because he says, what a fine cow you have there. 
Jack, he uses his name. Now, people only usually use your name if you know them. But it's Jack's answer that makes us think, huh? Because he says, how do you know my name? Asked Jack, confused. So have Jack and his man met before? I would say no. I think the man is magical. And how do we know that? Because Jack asks, how do you know my name? And Jack is confused. Read the questions, read the text, guys. Sentence stems and answer them. Pause me now. So what adjectives does the man use to describe the beans? And what does the man promise will happen with these beans? I'll give you these incredible beans in exchange for your cow, suggested the man. When you plant them, they will grow right up into the sky within just a few hours. Oh no, replied Jack. Daisy is all my mother and I have, and I must get a good price for her at market today. With these beans, you will never have to worry about money again, said the man persuasively. Alas, Jack gave in and swapped Daisy for the beans. So what adjective does the man use to describe the beans? He calls them incredible beans. And what does the man promise will happen with these beans? He promises that with these beans, you will never have to worry about money again. Makes Jack swap.
many cookies are there? There's 10 in each jar. And how many jars are there? So something times 10 equals. So there are how many cookies altogether? Complete the multiplication fact to match the bar model. Got 40 at the top. How many tens do you have to make that 40? So you have this many tens, which equals 40. And B, how many tens do you have this time? So you have, count your tens. Five, six, seven, seven, and there's 10 in each group. So how many does that equal all together? Pause me now, guys, and get that did. So you can see that there are six jars with 10 in each jar, which gives you 60. So there are 60 cookies. And there are four groups of 10, which gives you 40. There are seven groups of 10, which gives you 70. Pause now and check your answers. So C, this time, we're making 100 with 10s. So how many 10s do you need to make 100? This many 10s equals 100. So fill in that space there. Then you need to draw a bar model to represent five times 10, five groups of 10. So like the orange and blue boxes that we've been working with, you need to draw one of those to show five times 10. Then number four, A, you need to complete the number line. So fill in the gaps and which times tables is the number line showing you've got to tick your answer and explain how you know. Pause me now. You can see here we've put 10 in each in each little box and there are 10 groups of 10, which equals 100. And then you can see here, there are five groups of 10, which equals the 50. And number line is going up in tens, so we need to fill in all the missing tens. And we know it's the 10 times table because they go up in tens. Pause now to check your answers. Complete the number sentences. So, have a little read, see what calculations they are and fill in the missing numbers. Pause me now. Question six, Eva is seven years old. Her gran is 10 times older. How old is Eva's gran? Eva's gran is this many years old. So if Eva is seven and her gran is 10 times older, how old is her gran? Pause me now. Have a pause now, check your answers. Any that you've got incorrect, go back and check where the mistakes are. Pause me now. Four children have some money. Teddy has the money. Dora says, I have twice as much money as Teddy. Jack says, I have five times as much money as Teddy. And Rosie says, I have 10 times as much money as Dora. How much money do they each have? Teddy has, Dora has, Jack has, and Rosie has. Pause me now to have a good look through this, guys. So you can see, Teddy has four pence, Dora has eight pence, Jack has 20 pence, and Rosie has eight pence. So who burnt the buns? The great fire is spreading across London like, well, like wildfire. Everyone is desperately trying to put out the flames that have been burning for days. But how did the fire start and who is to blame? As detective chief inspector on the case, it is your job to find out who is responsible for starting the fire. So far, you've discovered that the fire began in the early hours of Sunday morning at Thomas Farrier's bakery on Pudding Lane. Thomas Farrier has told you that it started when someone forgot to take the buns out of the oven, but he doesn't know exactly who it was. You have taken down the names and descriptions of the 20 people who work at the bakery. There are also five important clues to be discovered. To crack the case, you will need to solve each clue and check the information with a, with a list of names. You'll be able to solve, will you be able to solve the mystery of who burnt the buns before London burns down? <laughs> Good luck. So we have a big long list of names. So first name, surname, whether they're an adult or child, what their bakery job is. So we've got selling, baking, cleaning. Yep, yeah, that's it, one of three. Their favorite baked food, food, and what their height is in feet. 
So how many feet tall they are. So clue number one, a misspelt mystery. Thomas Farrier has received an anonymous note from the person who burnt the buns, but they're not very good at spelling. Can you circle the words in the note that are spelt incorrectly and write the letters that are missing from the words below? Rearrange the letters to find out if the bun burner is an adult or a child. So we're going to be either spelling the word adult or child. So if we look along here, I spelt correctly. Yeah, happy with that. Um, ah, afraid is not spelt correctly. What letters missing out of afraid? An A. Okay, so A is our first letter. Two is okay. Tell is okay. You, that, it was me that burnt the buns. That looks all okay to me. I what oh, what are we missing from want? I want to tell we're missing a T. So can you see? You're gonna go through, you're gonna collect some letters, and then you're gonna figure out whether this word's gonna say adult or child. Okay, so pause me now to do that. Pause me now. So you can see here. We're miss we've collected the A, the T, the U, the L, the D. And of course, that spells adult if we change all the letters around. So we've got to go through here. The burner, the bun burner is an adult. So we've got to get rid of all of the people who are not an adult. So all of the children, it's not them. They've got to go. So Agnes, you can get out of here because you're a child and is an adult, so it could be her. So you see what I mean? So go through and have a write, write a list of who it is that it could be. E five O fun. Now, these characters are in your workbox if you're at home. If you are in school, you might be able to have some paper or at home, you might have some paper to be able to create your own characters. So who do you think each of these characters are? Let's think about that before we go diving into making them. Who do you think they are? Let's have a look. So we have a cow. I think that's a bit random that we've labeled the cow, but fine. The cow, the giant, the mother, strange man from the woods. <laughs> Gecko and a harp. Hmm, very strange. So, I would like you to have a think about what you can say about each of the characters in the Jack and the Beanstalk. So, you've got a few options here. You can create your own, what are they called? Puppets. <laughs> Lollipop stick puppets, or you can curl up some paper to stick behind your puppet or you can print them out of the workbook, however you want. You might want to create your own puppets so that you can recreate later in the week your own story, ready for the story that we're gonna to write together on Friday. Or if you don't think that sounds like a great idea, you can draw a picture of the character that you're focusing on. And I would like you to be able to write notes around that picture, thinking about what he or she looks like, what kind of personality they have? Are they kind? Are they not so kind? And what kind of things give you that clue? If some, if you think that somebody's quite kind, what have they done that's kind? If somebody's quite unkind, what have they done that's unkind? And then some extra facts. Now, these don't have to be exact. You're not going to know loads of things about all of them, but mix it up and have a think about what you could write about each character. So you can draw your picture or you can make your, your stick puppet and then draw, write some facts about them. At least two would be amazing more would be even better so if you're in school uh, mrs statham and miss budden will be talking to you about what they think is appropriate and how many you should do and then if you're at home you might need to make the decision for yourself or you can check with mummies and daddies and if you are at home and you want to email them to me i would love to see them please so here are some words help you to describe our leading character of Jack. So next to him, there are some words. I don't know that all of them are appropriate for Jack. I think there's some opposite ones. So you're going to have to go through, have a look, see which, see which ones, sorry guys, see which ones are appropriate and then draw your picture of Jack and write those words in and around him. Now, our connected curriculum, I'm going to give you some of the um, Britain 
millions, I want to call them millennials again, millions, the Brita millions ideas. Um, and then I'm going to give you a few extra ideas as well. So if you've done them or you're thinking, hmm, I'd like something different to do, hopefully there's going to be something in here for you guys. We need to be looking at weather. Oh, disappeared. We need to be looking at weather. So I thought it might be interesting to have a little look through these slides on weather and some activities that we might be able to do. So I'd like you to have a think about what the word weather means, what different types of weather there are, what is the weather like today and how do you know what are your clues like in guided reading looking for the clues what are the clues so the weather what kind of weather is it how will you find out about what the weather will be like tomorrow so pause me now to have a think or a discussion about those questions so the different weather we have sunny windy rainy we have sunny intervals thunderstorms and weather forecasts so i thought it might be exciting if you pretended to be a weatherman or a weather woman and you can talk us through what today is so uh, when they go to the weather they go thanks jane thanks over Thanks for handing over to me there, Jane. Now, I'd like to talk to you about the weather. So today we can see that it's a very sunny day and we know that it's a very sunny day because the sky is blue. There are no clouds in sight and it's very warm. The temperature is high today. So I want you to go through. So decide what kind of day you're going to be reporting on. You could pretend to be in a blizzard. It could be the coldest, most wintry day you've ever experienced. It doesn't actually have to be what day it is today. And you're going to do a presentation as the weatherman or the weather woman in the studio being handed over by Jane or whoever, whoever you want. I want you to do some reenactments of what it would be like to be a weather person, please. I've just had a mail. I don't know if you've got what I've just done or whether it's been re-recorded over. I don't know, but I've tried to highlight and click and it hasn't worked. So I'm going to stop. I don't know. So if we start with branches snapping in the wind, which one of these looks like it is the picture for that would make a branch snap in the wind rain, really heavy rain might wind snow really heavy snow might as well sunny and cloudy but let's have a look at these other pictures and see about these so pause me now because i might not have told you to do this already pause me now and have a look which three matches so you need one from the top one for the middle one for the bottom how are you going to match them up pause on that pause me now ah. I'm going to mare on this slide, guys. So you could be saying, well, rain could rain could snap the could snap the branch, You're right? And snow could. But which one of these top pictures, if we pick snow, which one do you think it's going to be? It's going to be this one, isn't it? And this one goes with the snow. Which image do you think at the bottom represents the snow? And if you're not sure, work back on backwards. Which one do you know for sure? We know that's fog, don't we? For sure, F O G fog. Which one do you think is going to be snow? Which one looks like it's like this one? I reckon, yeah, all greens, all the greens. So then the rain, we said rain could have broke the branches. Is it going to be pink? No, 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 no. Which rain, which picture at the top is going to go with the rain? Is it going to be the car fog lights, the sun cream or the umbrella, of course? And then which one of these at the bottom? Which one at the bottom? It's the center one, isn't it? So which one of these has made the tree branches snap? Windy, sunny and cloudy, or fog? Wind, yes. So we have a look. Which one do you think is the wind on the bottom here? Well, this one says fog, doesn't it? This one on the far left-hand side, what's that going to be? It's going to, you can see the little sun behind the cloud. This one is the wind symbol. So they're all our pinks. So then let's go to the car fog lights. Which picture shows fog? Yeah, it's a misty, magical cloud, isn't it? A fog-like cloud. And then this one says fog, that's easy. And then the last three, let's check we've done it right. Our sun cream, when it's a sunny and cloudy day, and there you can see the sun behind the cloud. Good job, guys. Now, how might we measure the weather? That's a question for us, isn't it? How might we we measure the weather that's a tongue twister so in the pack on the monday pack i have put together some little ideas for creating your own weather measuring devices now if you're in school i'm not sure what you can and cannot access i'm hoping the little cup 
and maybe some twigs. I was thinking maybe you might be able to use twigs from the wild area, from the um, forest area, to put all that together. I was hoping maybe you might be able to make a wind measure at least. Maybe if you're at home, you might be able to make a water measure. I know uh, Mrs. Mullen has set that as one of your challenges. We did see a couple. If you've already done that, you obviously don't need to do it again because you'll have one in the garden. But if you can show me some of your results, because we've had some fierce rain, haven't we? So in the work pack, on the Monday, there are some ideas of how you can do this. You can spread it out. You don't need to do it today. They're just some ideas. Now, this video is problematic. I can't download it. So I've got an image here, but I can't download it to my computer to upload it so that it just magically works for you guys. So what I have done is I've made a copy at the top of the BBC bite size clip. It's Z9G87TY. If you type in that into the top of the Google, then it will come up. Or you can just Google making weekly weather recordings and that video will come up and you can have a little peek at that video and give you some more information about weather stations. And this is what they would look like. Now, the thermometer, we can't make thermometers, but if you're in school, there might be a thermometer that you are able to put outside. We had one in our classroom for a little while, didn't we? Um, that's how your rain gauge will look if you're at home or if you're able to create that. And then that majestic beast is what the wind direction. You're gonna have to have a little think, of, find out of where north, south, east and west is, aren't you? Maybe you need some grown-ups to help you do that if you don't have a compass. Phones have compasses, so you'll be able to find that information out by using your phone. And then I have, included in the work booklet a weather report now you don't need to download that weather report to be able to write a weather report you can have a look um on the screen right now actually i'm going to put a bigger one i'll, I'll add an extra screen in after this one to do a bigger one so that you can get an idea of what it is that we need to look at i'll do that now over here I've blown up the sheet a little bit so if you are at home and you, or if you're in school and it's tricky getting everything printed out isn't it so you can create your own weather report replicating this so you can put a date and a season at the top and then you can put what the weather is like today you can draw an image today it has been it is spelt so there's some words underneath that you can use to include that and then you can create yourself a little weather chart and every day when you come into school or when you wake up in the morning or before you go to bed in the evening you can create your own little weather chart and we can keep a tab of what the weather's like now you might not be able to do the temperature you might not be able to do the rainfall you might not whichever it is that you have made and created to be able to record then you can fill that in you can also talk about you can do the little symbols if you wanted to. So on the Monday workbook, there's the little symbols that you can use. So you can make it and add to it however you want. But it would be lovely to be able to see a weather chart where I can see a real clear picture of what the weather has been like. So the little weather report that we did at the beginning of this, I wonder how much more information we've got and that we feel like we've learned about being a weather reporter. I wonder if we can do a week's weather report. So have a look at your little table of results that you've been keeping and you can do a reflective this week, the, we the weather has been, and you can take us through each day and talk to us about the different things that you know and that you've recorded about each day's weather. I would love to see some videos. I'd love to see your charts. However you do it, I would love to see your weather reports for, the, for a week. And then the next few slides are the slides that we had before on the CC stuff. I know you've started to work your way through some of these, but I know there's still some activities that some some of you haven't worked your way through yet. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to keep all this together and then it's a pick and choose what it is that you'd like to do, isn't it? So here is the time capsule where you can create a news report about your experience of lockdown. You could do a diary entry. You could also do a diary entry if you're in school now. If I know things are changing all the time, so you might have a different diary that you could write about, could write in now. These are some little things that we talked about. Now more and more of you are coming back into school, so this might not be as appropriate, but still some of you are at home, so you might like to do this. This is the pen pal option, which I thought was a 
fabulous idea. You could um, really make somebody's heart sing, couldn't you, with this one? Then we've got the little book of lockdown. So we're doing the digital book in school, aren't we? So how are you guys getting on with that one? Have we got any information that you want to forward on to me? Because I'd love to see that. And then this is our connected curriculum menu challenge board. And I know that some of you guys in school have been starting to work on this and it has been fabulous. Mrs. Statham and Mr. Budden have been talking about all the beautiful things that you're doing. And I'm very impressed very very impressed so I thought I'd pop this on here as well in case there's anything in there you want to keep on beavering away with good job guys